Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with Tycon Systems. Today's host is Seth Ellen. He is their sales and marketing manager, and he'll be presenting today. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to submit them in the question box, and Seth will answer them at the end of today's presentation. Seth, I'm finished for now. Please go ahead and take it on over. Great. Thanks so much, Julie. Um, so Tycon Systems, last time uh, we talked about some easy bridges and some uh, you know, power equipment, POE devices that we offer. And, but a big part of our business has come through customers that have required or have strange requirements. Maybe they require power that's going to be off-grid or they have partial power, UPS system backups. And so today we wanted to focus on our remote power. Um, this would be in locations where maybe you don't have the ability to bring power to that site, um, something that's off-grid, or maybe it's not economical. Um, and so what we do is design custom systems based on the customer's application. Um, so we're going to go through and we're going to talk about different applications, and then we're going to discuss how to actually size the correct system, how much solar you need, how, much, how many batteries are needed, in order to keep those devices powered uh, 24 hours a day. So here's a couple pictures of what our remote pro systems would look like. Um, on your left, we have a 30-watt solar panel with a polycarbonate enclosure. It can hold up to 36 amp hours of battery bank. Um, in the middle is 160 watts of solar. Uh, along with our steel enclosure, it can hold up to four 50 amp hour batteries. And on the right, we have a 320 watt solar panel array. Um, also, with uh, with that enclosure, we can have eight, or sorry, four uh, 50 amp hour batteries. And we have released recently a, a new steel enclosure, which will hold up to eight batteries, uh, so 400 amp hours of battery bank. Um, so these are going to be your typical systems when we design. Um, we also, uh, when we design, we, we keep in mind the voltage requirements for all of the devices. Um, and then, as, like, as I mentioned, we have a large steel enclosure. We also have a larger aluminum enclosure, which will hold 720 amp hours of battery bank. And these are going to be for much larger systems. But um, we cater and customize based on each application. We look at the power draw of the equipment and the sunlight. So here's a couple of applications that we have that are just a, a little unique. Um, this is for an osprey nest that's in the middle of a lake. Um, they, you know, the nature habitat wanted to have a way to monitor the migration, the uh, hatching of eggs, that kind of thing. And so they wanted to put a camera. And they were able to build a solar system um, to keep everything powered, send the video uh, back to their main hub so that they can uh, keep an eye and, and monitor. This has been a growing uh, market for us is the construction sites where they don't have power yet, but they want to have security in that site. They're able to build a system, power the, the cameras, the access points, have Wi-Fi in that area, and then when they finish building, they can move that to the next site. And lastly is CCTV. Um, we do a lot of video surveillance uh, for our customers, um, powering, you know, using power poles or um, light poles, that's been another big one recently where they have part-time power. They maybe have power for, you know, from dusk till dawn, and during that time they, they power the lights. Well, we're able to tap into the power pole, build a UPS system to keep everything powered at night when the power turns on, it'll charge up the batteries, and then when the power turns off, everything is running off batteries. So all during the day, your cameras will be powered um, directly from the uh, the UPS system, so there's no interruption in that power. So here are the variables that we look at when sizing a system. Um, we look at the total draw. So most manufacturers, you know, we, we, when we uh, work with wireless uh, access points or security cameras, LED lighting, most of them are very good at listing the total draw. And they might put it in different words, but you're looking for total draw or power consumption, something to that effect. And we want to look at that in watts. Uh, if you don't know how to find that, obviously uh, we have the equation there. Um, but we want to look at the total draw of all the equipment that's going to be powered at this site. And then we another variable is hours of operation. Typically, most applications are going to be 24 hours a day. Uh, you want the security cameras running nonstop, but you might have some LED lighting or uh, maybe an access point that's just going to be part-time power, or maybe 
it's going to be powered three months out of the year. So we look at the total hours of operation that, that, that you want to use it. Uh, again, maybe a, a water pump, an irrigation pump that's going to be run for an hour a day. So that's another variable. And lastly is the, the peak sunlight hours in your area. The sunlight that you have in Arizona is going to be much different than the power, or the, sorry, the sunlight that you have in New York. So we look up the the uh, whether it's you know through the zip code or the city state or even country, um, how much sunlight do you have each day? And we always look at the lowest month. So we'll talk about that as we uh, plug in these variables. Um, so it's very simple to uh, to find our calculator page. You can go to our website as tyconsystems.com click on the resources tab and then calculators and then what you will see is a, a calculator similar to this and this is where you're going to input all the information that you've come up with um, so let's take a common application we have many of these applications we're going to use um, ubiquity as an example uh, I hope uh, you don't mind um, we have a, many of these you know we our, our systems support all the different manufacturers but this is a, is a great example because we have many people that are using um, this application where they have one access point and maybe four cameras uh, I think these cameras are their older models so don't uh, tell them um, they might be upset with me for not using their latest version but we'll look at this one and uh, and determine the total draw and how much solar and battery bank we need to keep everything powered 24 7 so first we look at their data sheet the air fiber 5x you can see here that this requires uh, 12 watts of power consumption or power draw um, continuously um, another thing that I always look at when I'm taking notes on this is the voltage requirement many manufacturers have different voltage requirements whether it's 24 volt PoE 12 volt DC 48 volt PoE passive or 802.3 AF AT compliant um, if you don't know or don't understand how to read this part we're, we're able to help we're you know we have skilled engineers that are able to drill down figure out what voltage requirements are needed for each device um, but I always want to make sure because you know, calculating how much uh, draw and, and uh, sunlight um, you have to determine solar is only the first part we also need to know how we're going to power each device individually so first now we have 12 watts at 24 volt PoE next we're going to look at their cameras um, here you can see max power consumption four and a half watts each um, there are four cameras so we're at 18 watts total draw all at 24 volt PoE so ubiquity made it easy for us we have a total you know 24 volt PoE system uh, with five devices now with five devices we need to look at doing a switch uh, we do have a wide variety of switches um, whether they're passive compliant um, or anything in between there's really nothing in between but we have a, a unique switch where you have a 24 volt DC input and you can get a 48 volt compliant output but uh, with this we will use a passive five port switch because we're adding a switch we're adding draw so now we're at a three watt draw so we're gonna go plug into our calculations next we're gonna we're gonna assume that uh, we're at 24 hours uh, operation and now we're gonna determine how much sunlight is needed or sorry you have in your area so we picked uh, San Diego that's where I'd prefer to be right now I think it's about 28 degrees in uh, Utah I'd prefer to be on a beach in San Diego but um, what we'll do is we'll pl plug in San Diego California it'll give us the peak sun hours for each month of the year now um, what we, you know we don't want to get excited and look at August and say hey we have 6.81 hours unfortunately we want this to run year-round so we're going to use the lowest peak sunlight <clears throat> excuse me so we're going to look at December that's going to be your typical month uh, for North America December January is going to be your lowest um, south of the equator you're looking at July August so always go with the lowest uh, amount so that you know that it's going to be powered 24 7 okay so now we're going to plug in our um, our variables so our total load in watts was 33 we're going to run it 24 hours a day we've plugged in 5.14 as our peak sunlight and then you have our next is extra hours of battery backup now this is if somebody requires extra battery bank I don't typically change this right away until there's a request I want to see how much actual battery bank is required 
because we design our systems to run 24-7, 365. I don't design it to run 24-7, 200 days of the year. We want it to run year-round, and so typically this will be a, a, a solution sufficient to power all the devices. So let's see. Now we're going to hit calculate, and we're left with our 155 watts of solar panel array needed and 132 amp hours of battery bank. And then we give you suggestions of systems that you could use for this. Um, I think I got ahead of myself there. We're going to highlight that for you just in case you didn't follow. Um, so the system that we're going to decide, we, we remember that we need a 24 volt PoE. So we're going to look at this system. This is the RPST 24100160. Now to give you some insight, we try to make our part numbers intuitive. Uh, we want you to be able to understand what you're getting. So RP stands for Remote Pro. That's going to be in front of all of the solar powered systems. The next two, uh, the ST, would be the type of enclosure we provide. Um, this would be our steel enclosure. We also offer DC for die cast, and that's going to be for a smaller system. PL for polycarbonate enclosure, another small system. ST, of course, and then there's the STL, which is a larger steel enclosure. You can have more battery uh, bank added to that system. Or our AL, which is our aluminum. So that'll give you some insight as the, the first four of the number, uh, letters of the part number. Next would be our voltage. So this is going to be a 24 volt DC system. Now the part above it has a 1248. That would be a 12 volt DC output along with a 48 volt PoE. So if there's four part numbers, you're going to have a PoE output. And the last two digits are going to be that PoE voltage. Um, the reason I'm going with this uh, solar controller as a 24 volt is we can easily add our uh, passive PoE switch and power all devices from it. But this is something that will assist as well. So if you need help with the system design, um, you know, we'll, we'll help you make sure that we can get voltage uh, changes to anything that's needed because we can do mixed voltages uh, as well. Uh, the next part number, 100, would be our battery bank. So because this is a 24 volt system, you have 100 amp hours, which would actually be 200 amp hours of battery bank. So four batteries at 50, 50 technically 52 amp hours each. And then the last is our solar panel array. So here we have 160 watts of solar panel. So that'll give you some insight as to um, how to read our, those, those type of part numbers. And on the right is what a typical system would look like. Now our systems, uh, everything except for the pole are included. We include our solar panels, our enclosure, batteries, solar controller, and all of the mounting and, and uh, cabling needed to power your devices. So you bring the pole and your Cat5 cable and we provide everything else for you. Now, you may notice that uh, the minimum solar size panel needed is 155 watts, and the system that you will receive is 160. So you could do one of two things, one of three things. You could go with this system, and that would be great. You're in San Diego. That's going to be um, you know, powered year-round. I'm very confident in this system. Maybe if you're in an environment that has more cloudy days. You know, in, in Utah, we might not see the sun for a couple of weeks. So you may want to add some solar panels um, just to help supplement. Another option would be our uh, wind turbine. Now, the Breeze Pro is a 12 or 24 volt DC system. It has a built-in controller, so it can tie directly into your battery bank and help supplement uh, when you have less sunlight. So maybe you're a little bit close. I'm going to go back to that slide. Maybe you're a little bit close at the 155 watts, getting 160. Then you're like, well, what if those days, you know, I, I just want some extra, um, ac extra help with that. You can absolutely add the turbine to any 12 volt or 24 volt system. It'll recognize the batteries, um, what they're wired to, and will accommodate and help charge when you don't have as much sunlight uh, during those winter months or at night. Um, it also has a, a very low wind speed, st uh, startup speed. It's uh, four and a half miles an hour, um, and it's a 300 watt uh, turbine. So you can have up to 300 watts when you have obviously a good and consistent wind speeds. So um, the turbine is great. It's not for every system. If you're in an area where you just don't have the wind, then um, obviously adding solar or going with your, your current system would be uh, advisable. 
here's kind of what the system layout would be. Um, this would be the solar controller. This is not the controller that I'd recommended. Um, this is actually a PoE controller, but this is another one that you could use um, with our uh, uh, with that controller. Um, this has the 24 volt PoE output. You're going to tie your solar panels into the uh, solar power input, your batteries into the same. So everything is run through the controller. Um, that way you have regulated power to your devices. You plug your switch into the um, output of the, uh, of the controller and you power it uh, from the back of the solar controller. Um, this has the 12 volt or 24 volt DC output. And then all of your cameras are going to be powered off that uh, off of the switch. And because of the switch has that uh, fifth uplink, that's going to be where you're going to pass the data over to your air fiber. So this is going to be a typical application. Um, when you know, I had, I had mentioned we can assist on our website. We actually have uh, in many places in the top right corner. You're, you're seeing it. Sorry, you're going to see an orange tab, and it'll say need assistance or request system design. You fill in the information. You tell us, give us your, your uh, contact info so we know who to send an email back to. Um, you tell us what devices you're powering. You can just give us part numbers. If you want to include the uh, links, the URLs, that, uh, that's helpful but not necessary. And then give us a location. Uh, give us the city state or a zip code or a city country. Um, preferably something that the, the, the more specific the better. Um, and then we can look at the sunlight and we'll design the system and, and give you all the information needed including part number uh, of what you'd need. So um, that's remote power, pretty straightforward, um, but there's a learning curve. We're, we're definitely there to help. Um, UPS systems, we, we've had many uh, uh, customers in, many, in all over the world that are um, uh, requesting uh, battery backup. Maybe you have power at a site, but you want to have give yourself some extra um, uh, extra power in case power goes out, and you want to keep your customers up running 24/7. Um, maybe give yourself time to get out there with a generator. Um, whatever you decide to do, you know, UPS systems would be for those type of applications with the uh, the uh, the light poles. So here's how to use our UPS calculator. It's on the same calculator page just below the remote pro system calculator. Um, so we're going to type in, let's do that same scenario. We're going to do 33 watts, uh, total watts. But let's run it for eight hours. That'll give us time that, uh, you know, power goes out. Um, you you, you want to give yourself time to put up a generator or just have that eight hours because you know that the power company is going to be able to get it back up. Um, hit calculate and we see that we would need 44 amp hours of battery bank and here's the suggested system. So UPS again same uh, ST would be the part number. 12 is the 12 volt DC output and then it's a 50 amp hour battery and so there are plenty of there'd be plenty of room inside that enclosure and you're able to power um, all of your devices for eight hours. Um, here's some devices that will help you as you're doing that. So on the left, we have our TP-DIN uh, solar controller. It's a 48-volt solar controller. Um, it's a 20-amp. This includes a 7-port PoE switch that can be um, configured to 24 or 48-volt output, and it also has a, an auxiliary output. So this would be your solar controller plus PoE switch in addition to our monitor. Our TP-DIN monitor uh, firmware is also included and that is what is on the right. What this allows you to do is remotely, remotely monitor all of your devices. So from your desk you're able to log in to your tower that's 30 miles away. You're able to log in, check the voltage of the batteries, check the temperature. We have four voltage meters, four current sensors, two temperature sensors. Um, along with four relays. So you can hook up a generator, um, turn it on, you can turn on a light, you can reboot a camera, do all of that from your desktop. We have online graphing, data logging, um, you can set up compound logistics. So it'll ping you to say, hey, you know, voltage dropped, something's going on, it'll send you an email so that you can be alerted and know that something's going on and instead of having to drive out there, you log in your desktop or the mobile app that we have and you're able to configure and take care of all those devices. Um, and then below is our battery meter. So just to be able to tell the uh, voltage of your batteries. 
Um, want to run through a couple of different um, applications that we've seen because we've had people from all over say, oh, yeah, but I bet you can't do it here. Well, I bet we can. So I'm going to run through some real quick. Um, this is up in the North Pole. They are monitoring polar bear migration. So they went with the, uh, a much better enclosure to, with, to handle the, uh, the harsh elements. But um, this system they were using, um, and they, this is kind of their part-time power. They, they needed to, to power, I believe it was March through October, and that when they actually have sunlight. So that was good because in the winter months they have little to no, no sunlight. Um, but they were able to put this in that environment and, and be able to monitor the polar bears. Uh, this is a farmer in Texas that had a, a problem with wild pigs. So he set up a trap put up um, solar panel to watch uh, to uh, power the camera and then using our TPD in monitor he's able to monitor from his desktop saw that uh, you know he has a bunch of pigs in his trap he uses the TPD in monitor to close the gate and trap them and then he can uh, do what he needs to do with those pigs here is the uh, ninth hole of a golf course uh, they have a telephone inside that little uh, birdhouse enclosure and this was for uh, you know you're, you're going to golf uh, you're about to hit the ninth hole. You call into the clubhouse, place your order for lunch, finish the ninth, you go eat lunch, and then you can uh, play the back nine. So kind of a, a fun application um, where you're able to just have some power in, you know, in the middle of a golf course to, uh, to make it easier for, uh, for those golfers out there. Um, LED lighting. This uh, the city in Ohio wanted to power this uh, these LED lights, and and they could have run power from the city, but they'd have to trench through the grass and trench through the concrete parking lot, and it was going to be very uh, expensive to do that. And for a very inexpensive solution, they were able to put our polycarbonate enclosure with a couple of nine amp hour batteries, put lighting on both sides of the uh, the uh, the city street sign, and and power that at night. So. Um, you know, just a nice little feature that we were able to do for this uh, this city. A um, lot of security applications. Now, this is they're putting up security cameras. There was a lot of vandalism. What you can't see is um, to the left would be a, a power plant, or sorry, I don't know if it's a power plant, but I know it's a manufacturing plant of some sort, and they had a lot of vandalism in that area. So they put up uh, security cameras all around so that they can monitor and watch. Um, and make sure that they were avoiding that. You know, security obviously has has been a growing market with uh, with you know to prevent vandalism. Uh, mobile security and mobile solar. A uh, customer of ours in uh, San Diego was able to build their own uh, trailer with battery banks inside, so they have their own enclosure. Pull, put the solar panels up top. They can drop it off. Leave it there for uh, you know two weeks, a month, three months, whatever is needed, part of the contract, and they're able to do mobile security uh, and you know drop it off at a site, and uh, uh, it's been a very good business for them. Some of my favorite applications are uh, these extreme remote locations, so mountaintops where you're putting a couple of backhauls uh, going from one mountaintop to another. Uh, it would be very expensive. I've I've talked to customers that have had bids, and it was nearly it was a hundred hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollars to be able to pull power to that site now for a very small fraction of that you're able to bring power that's sustainable uh, continuous power through solar and then here's another the back end of, a, of another system where you know obviously they're in a very remote very extreme area but they needed to have a backhaul to get to get to uh, another site so um, very cool applications that we see if you have an application we'd love to have you send it to us um, we're always looking, uh, you know, we, we, we have our systems in all parts of the world in all environments, uh, Arizona, deserts of Arizona and, and Nevada, um, in the Middle East, we have them in extreme harsh and sea environments. So Canada, Montana, uh, obviously in the North Pole, as well as, you know, Puerto Rico, especially with the disaster relief, we've had many systems go out there to get, uh, wireless and Wi-Fi in uh, to the people of Puerto Rico after the disasters that hit just a few months ago so there's many different applications that we have seen um, our systems go to so if you have questions on that feel free to ask um, and then here's just another uh, light pole where they're able to tap into that um, where they have that part-time power or some cities don't let you tap in 
but you can utilize the light pole and a able to power um, extra lighting or your wireless devices. Um, we do have a mobile app. Um, you can uh, get it through Google Play or the Apple Store where you can do your system designs through that. You can look up the sunlight in that area. Basically everything that you need for the Remote Pro Calculator and the UPS Pro Calculator um, as well as the um, TPDIN uh, discovery tool so you can log in to all of your TPDIN monitors that you have spread throughout. Um, so. Like I said, there's a lot of different applications that we offer. If you ever have any questions, we have a team that's uh, always available to assist. Um, one thing I felt to mention as we're doing our uh, solar calculations, we do have so, uh, the wind calculator as well. So we can look at how much wind you have in your area uh, if you just don't know. I mean, we always think, oh, it's always sunny or it's always windy. Well, let's actually look to see what the, the, the good folks at the national database keep track of. How much wind do you have in your area? How much actual sunlight do you have in your area? So um, that's our presentation. Uh, Julie, I'm going to pass it back to you to see if there's any questions. Thank you very much, Seth, for that wonderful presentation. And yes, I do have a couple questions for you. Let's go ahead and get started with that. Can you Great. tell us a little bit about where your products are manufactured? Absolutely. So um, we do have factories in Taiwan. Um, we do we get our solar panels from our uh, manufacturer in uh, India. Majority of the products are um, brought in and we build here in Utah. So everything is so they're made in uh, I should say assembled in the USA. Um, we do ship from stock and typically there's no lead time. So I, I know that that's been an issue for some people where they needed something, uh, maybe a UPS system from someone else, and you know they were left with a three to four week lead time. Everything is in house in Bluffdale, Utah. So we built the systems here, and we can ship directly um, to any customer anywhere. Thank you very much. Um, you mentioned that there are people there always to help support. Can, are there yeah. hours of support that we should be aware of? Sure. Um, so we are. Our offices are open Monday through Thursday. Um, we, we get in here early, so typically 7 a.m. Mountain Time up until 5 o'clock, sometimes even later uh, Mountain Time in the, in the afternoon. Um, however, we have a team that's always monitoring emails. So email support is a constant. Um, phone support is going to be during those office hours as well as an online chat. So if you go to our Contact Us uh, tab on our website, you can do online chat, get our phone numbers, give us a call. Um, We'll have somebody answer. If not, then uh, maybe our support team is you know busy at the time. You can leave a message, and we'll call you back typically within uh, you know 10 to 15 minutes. So we do want to make sure that we take care of our customers, and so that's something that we're very proud of is our support. Um, our support team is very proactive at taking care of our customers. So if it is by chance in those off hours and it's an emergency, we do have people that are that are monitoring the emails so that we can get back to you in a timely manner. That's great news. Thank you. Um, are there any, does, does Tycon Systems have online videos and, and further in-depth trainings that describe your products and how it works? We do. That is something that, uh, that I'm constantly working on. Um, I, unfortunately, I didn't go to uh, acting school, so I'm a terrible presenter, uh, but I have done videos. Just please don't judge. Uh, but we do have a YouTube channel at uh, Tycon Systems. So we have done product videos where we will break down the TPDN monitor, our solar controller, remote power. So these are available online, and we are always adding videos. So uh, we try to keep them short because of how boring I can be when I talk, but just know that they are available. And then if, if you do have, uh, you know, Maybe some special requirements. We have I have done uh, training either through you know through this webinar, which I think is a great resource, or we can do something where uh, it's a one -off, excuse me a one-on-one -on -one training, and uh, I can do something similar where maybe you have specific questions. Uh, maybe you're attending and you want your team uh, to be aware. I'm available, so we can uh, set something up and and do a video share um, and do a special training for our customers. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Um, are there any licensing fees? There are no licensing fees, no. It, once you purchase, it's yours. So there's nothing to license or relicense every year. Um, obviously, cities will have different uh, requirements on being able to put up 
uh, you know, building any tower site. However, they typically don't have restrictions when you're doing something solar. So it's just checking with your city, but there's nothing from us uh, to renew or license while, while uh, doing this. Um, as uh, I had brought up our solar controller, that is, you know, that the, the sorry, the one that has the TPD in built in, you can actually customize that. You can change the firmware to put your logo, your label, um, and, uh, and and make that your own. So, But there are no licensing fees with that, absolutely. Thank you, Steph, for that. Um, does Tycon Systems offer or have an online community forum? We don't, not at the moment. Uh, w that is something that we're looking at doing, though. Uh, we are always monitoring other manufacturers because we, we work with everyone, and so we maintain a good relationship with these other manufacturers. Um, and so we're we're part of their forums, um, part of the WISPA forum, uh, and and many others. And so we're we're vigilant with these, and we try to offer suggestions and assistance where we can. But we have not developed our own forum. But we you know through email or our blog or Facebook, you know when messages are sent, um, we can uh, you know re reply right away. But that is something that we look to to do in the future is uh, putting together some sort of forum. Thank you very much for that. Next question. In regards to the UPS Pro, is it compatible with Ubiquiti, Cambium, Microtech, et cetera? Absolutely. Um, we, we play spectacularly with all of the above. Um, you mentioned you know, the, the, the big ones, Microtech, Ubiquiti, um, Cambium, but you know, the Mimosa, Ciclu. Um, we we uh, have done recent projects on on hike vision or hick vision I'm sorry I don't I've heard it both ways from the people at hike or hick vision but uh, we we support powering their cameras access um, we, we've done projects with cradle point so I have yet to find a manufacturer that we don't uh, work with that we all of our systems were able to uh, to adapt because you know part of our brand uh, is is the remote power but it's also POE products, DC-DC converters, where you can go from one voltage to another. So just because Cambium might be negative uh, 48 volt and Ubiquiti might be uh, 24 volt, we have DC converters and switches that will be able to convert from whatever we need to. Um, so that's that's you know we we like those challenges um, to uh, to make sure that we have all of the products necessary so that you can mix equipment. Thank you very much for that, Seth. Um, you just showed us the Tycon Systems mobile app. Is that a free download? It is a free download. So um, it's a fairly new app, so you might have to scroll down a little bit, but you'll look for our Tycon logo. But if you just search Tycon Systems, um, it is a free app, and uh, we encourage you to download that and, and start playing with the online calculator. Thank you. Um, someone asks here, where, uh, what is the website for the solar calculator? Um, so it is tyconsystems.com, and then when you uh, along the top, you're going to see resources. Uh, click on resources, and then you'll have a drop-down box that says calculator, and so that's where you're going to find our online calculator. Seth, thank you very much for answering those questions. Also, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. If anyone has any further questions, please feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. If you wish to view any of the products mentioned or shown here today, please visit us at www.microcom.us. Please remember this webinar presentation has been recorded and it will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel so you can have the opportunity to view it again on YouTube. Thank you again everybody for joining. Thank you Seth for being our wonderful pre presenter today. And everyone you have bet. a Thank wonderful you, rest of your day. Thanks, Julie. You're welcome.